Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow options can make by selling put and cover call options as well as using poor man's cover calls. I will show you every trade we did last month in September and talk through three of my favorite option trades and the strategy that we used for that trade. This will help you see how you can use these same option trading strategies to consistently generate monthly cash flow in your account. Here you see every option trade we did last month in September. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. I will talk you through the naked put option position and trade that we did in Corning, ticker symbol GLW, that has gone against us, how we manipulate this position to get it back into our favor, all while generating some awesome return. I'll also discuss the naked put option trade we did in Cisco, ticker symbol SYY, that paid us an over 38% non-leverage return on capital. And I'll share with you all the details of the leaps and poor man's cover call position and trade we did in Microsoft, which also yielded a phenomenal return. As you can see, it was a very busy month. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of buying and selling options, we put a net of $12,580 cash into our pocket. In the orange box, you see that market data cost us $32.75. At the bottom left in the green box, you see that we collected just over $774 in dividends from the six covered call positions that we are in. So in all, as a result of buying and selling options and collecting some dividends, we put into our pocket a net of $13,321.65. If you annualize that return on the approximately $900,000 in capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 18% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about the return on the margin requirement of $173,714, it equates to a 93.3% annualized return on margin. The first trade I want to talk through are the put options that we sold in Cisco, ticker symbol SYY. Cisco is just one of the approximately 200 stocks that we are tracking on a daily and weekly basis looking for opportunities to enter a position in them. Here you see that on September 4th, the weekend before we did this trade, Cisco was on our watch list. It was rated as a 6.5 out of 10 because it was currently trading at $78 per share and a little ways away from support, but close enough to keep an eye on it over the next week. However, as you can see here, during the week, it dropped from $78 per share down to right at $76 per share. This is also at the red 200 moving average on the daily chart. A couple other reasons why I felt comfortable selling put options in Cisco is because as you can see in the white box at the bottom in the volume section on the daily chart, over the previous month and a half or so, there have been really nice buying pressure in Cisco. Over on the weekly chart, where the yellow arrow is, notice that the area where it was trading at was also right at this green 50 moving average, which appeared to be serving as support for it. Down the volume section in the yellow rectangle, notice that since the big drop in the spring of 2020, there had overall been really nice buying pressure in Cisco. All these factors together made us feel really comfortable selling put options in Cisco. So as you can see here, on September 8th, we sold the out of the money October 15th $75 put options. For that, we were paid $1.80 per share. Well, how did it turn out? Now we have fast forwarded to September 28th, the day that we bought these put options back to close them out. There are a couple of things I want to point out to you that help you understand why we decided to close them out. The first factor is as you can see here, these options were only trading for 22 cents per share. That meant that we'd have to wait an extra 17 days to pocket that remaining 22 cents per share. That alone was a pretty good reason to close this position, but there were other reasons that helped us make this decision. Notice up top that the day before, Cisco had made a higher high. However, the price was pushed way down by the close of the trading day. The next day, the 28th, the day that we closed this position out, buyers again tried to push Cisco up and it did make again a higher high, just barely, but notice that this time when the market closed, it closed well below the close of the previous day. Notice down in the volume section where the purple arrow is that the buying pressure was increasing compared to the previous week. However, a couple days before we exited this position, that excitement seemed to peak and the day before we exited, the volume was actually lower than it had been the previous days. And the day we exited, since it was a down day, is red and the volume was actually the lowest it had been over the previous week and a half. That told us that the upward momentum or excitement from buyers of Cisco was diminishing. Because of that, it was time to close this position out. So that's what we did. We bought this put option back for $0.22 cents per share and put that capital right back to work in a new position. In all, we were in this position for 20 days. We put a net of $1.58 per share into our pocket. If you annualize that return based on the $75 we had at risk, it equates to a 38.4% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about the return on margin, remember that we were able to put into our pocket right at $948 for this position. 
So if you annualize that return based on the $5,233 margin requirement, it equates to a 331% annualized return on margin. The next trading position I want to share with you is a poor man's cover call in Microsoft. First, let me give you a brief history of this poor man's covered call position. Here you see the chart up to the day that we first entered this position in Microsoft. On August 27th, we bought to open the June of 23, $235 leaps call option. That cost us $81.21 per share. Simultaneously, we sold the third Friday of October, 315 call option and received $2.41 per share. Fast forward one month, and on September 28th, with the October 315 call option only worth 26 cents per share, we bought to close it out and sold to open the third Friday of November call option for $3.77 per share. That means we put a net of $3.51 per share into our pocket on September 28th. The result, as you can see here, is that just by selling these two call options against our long leaps call, we have lowered our cost basis from $81.21 per share down to $75.32 per share. So in a little over a month, we've already reduced our cost basis by over 7%. Also notice that the call option we sold is pretty far out of the money. The reason is that we want to give ourselves some room for Microsoft to continue its upward trend, which will help our long leaps call options to also appreciate in value. If, however, Microsoft switches direction into a neutral or even a bearish trend, then we will lower the strike price of the call option that we are selling each month. For about the first month that we have been in this position, Microsoft traded pretty much sideways. But over the past several weeks, it's gone down in value. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. But one thing we know for sure, on a monthly basis, we'll continue to collect cash flow as we roll this short near-term call option out in time. That cash flow will give us a really nice return and lower our cost basis. Speaking of return, if you run the numbers on the $3.51 per share that we received for the maximum 52 days that we will at most be in this position and calculate that return based on the cost of the LEAPS call option that we initially paid for it, which was $81.21 per share, it equates to just over a 30% annualized return on that capital. And keep in mind that as of the day that we did this trade, Microsoft could actually go up before it reaches our near-term short strike price call option. Here you see one of the reasons why I like trading poor man's cover calls so much. They can generate awesome cash cash flow in return while also giving you the opportunity for some really nice appreciation. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button and thank you so much for doing that. The next trade I want to share with you is actually a position that's gone against us. But I want to show you the trade that we did last month because it'll help you see how you can use options to manipulate positions that have gone against you and still generate an awesome return. Here are the details on this put option trade. Let me take you back to when we initiated this position in Corning, ticker symbol GLW. Where you see the white arrow on August 13th, we sold the third Friday of September $40 put option. When we did this trade, as you can see here, everything looked like it was lining up for a really good high probability trade. As you can see where the white arrow is, Corning was approaching the red 200 moving average, which was just below our $40 strike price. Also notice down at the bottom in the volume section where the purple arrow is, that the downward selling pressure appeared to be diminishing. However, as the old saying goes, looks can be deceiving. Here's what the chart looked like on the day that we rolled this short put option out last month, which was on September 15th. At the left side of the arrow, the base of the arrow, that's where we initiated our position. Notice that for several weeks, Coining continued to find nice support at that red 200 moving average. However, a couple weeks ago, it went below this red 200 moving average, and as a result, it was a position that had gone against us. So how can we use options to manipulate this position to put the odds of winning back in our favor while still generating a good return? With Coining trading just below $39 per share, we could have received more cash if we had rolled that same $40 strike price out to November. But after seeing Coining break below the 200 moving average, we knew that it was time to manipulate this position to put the odds of winning back in our favor while still collecting some cash. Here you see the trade we did. On September 15th, we rolled the September $40 put option out and down by a dollar to November 19th, $39 put option. For that, we put a net of 60 cents per share into our pocket. By rolling this put option down by a dollar and pocketing 60 more cents, we were able to adjust this position by a dollar and 60 cents more to our favor. If you analyze the return on that $1.60 per share by the 65 days we'll at most be in this position, it equates to a 23% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we trade similar to the three I spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks that we use to manipulate short option positions to put the odds of winning in our favor while still pocketing awesome cash flow, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.